Hi guys, today we will show you how we did the installation of this Atoto S8 Pro system in our 2016 Scion TC. So we replaced the original uh, Pioneer unit. Well, the main reason for myself is because it has navigation, plus it's pretty much a tablet in your vehicle. So for this installation, uh, we actually had to buy a few products uh, besides the unit to make the installation possible. As you can see, we had to install these two brackets on the sides. The reason is because the original unit is uh, actually wider. As you can see. This is how they look. Uh, it's made by Metro and I will leave the link in the description. So besides that, for the installation, you will need a, a Toyota wiring harness like this also we had to buy an adapter uh, for the radio antenna again all this will be in the video and uh, we were able to retain steering wheel controls using this module it's called ASWC1 as you can see it does uh, change the volume up and down and it will also switch tracks using these two buttons. The unit is fully functional and I will soon uh, make a video, more in-depth review of the actual head unit itself. But for now, I hope you enjoy the installation video. There's a connector right here. Use 10 millimeter socket to remove four bolts. Now I'm going to remove original brackets, uh, for that I'll be using 8mm socket. Now I will mount brackets on uh, a Toto head unit. So the only possible way to do it uh, that I found is to mount it to hole number five. This way it will fit into the dashboard and unfortunately it will only be held by one screw but again as I said this is the only option that I can see possible right now. I will be using the screws uh, that come with a, a total bracket. So again, hole number one, two, three, four, five, and the screw. Make sure that it's parallel. Now that both brackets are installed, uh, let's put it in and see how it fits. Oh, 
put back the cover for now. So as you can see now we have another problem uh, because uh, OEM head unit is wider. Now we have these two huge gaps which is no good. But there is a solution for that as well. I had to buy the stream bracket or brackets. These guys come from Metro and I will leave the link for them in the description and they will be able to fill these two holes. So this bracket will go right here. Uh, because it is universal as you can see currently it doesn't fit as well but there is a solution for that too. I'll have to just cut off this section here and then I'll, I will be able to install uh, the trim piece using these two holes. Okay, let's put it in. And this is how it's gonna look. After we have completed our bracket installation, uh, now it's time to connect wiring harnesses. So here we have uh, our ATOTO wiring harness. This one will be connected in the back of this unit. So it will go here like that. And uh, here we have the Toyota wiring harness which uh, I had to purchase separately and uh, I will leave the link for this in the description. So I'll quickly show you guys uh, the diagram for the connections that we'll be doing. And the next step would be to solder wires together. And after that uh, we'll go over which uh, wires we connected. If you guys don't know how to solder, uh, there is also other options. Uh, in our previous ATOTO installation video we used uh, nylon couplers and I will leave uh, the link for that as well so you can take a look and uh, possibly use that option.
Uh, the soldering has been finished and I'll give you a brief rundown on, of uh, what wires we have connected so far. So we have eight different wires, uh, speaker wires, like, like you can see here front right minus, front left plus, uh, so it's gonna be front left minus, uh, rear left minus, etc. So there'll be eight wires like that. So for both for speakers both rear and front. Besides that, we have connected uh, dimmer, illumination, constant battery power, uh, ground wire, and uh, accessory ignition. So these are the main wires that we have connected so far. So as of now, we have a uh, amplifier turn on, parking brake, and uh, rear camera not connected. So the rear camera will probably have to do later when we install the rear camera. Besides that, we still have our steering wheel control section here. As you can see, it has been represented by three wires. Steering wheel key plus, uh, steering wheel key plus, another one, and uh, this one is uh, steering wheel audio control. So the reason why we left this uh, not connected is first of all because uh, the Toyota wiring harness does not have these wires. So for that we'll have to get a different adapter which we'll, we'll install a little bit later. Another important thing that you will need to have is an uh, antenna adapter like that. The reason is uh, because uh, Itoto has this, si uh, this kind of connector in the back and uh, Toyota uses this connector. So in order to be able to listen to the radio you will have to get this adapter and I will leave the link for that in the description. So as you can see we have connected uh, the power antenna wire, the blue one. So it goes to to uh, a Toto wire harness and it's been connected with uh, Toyota uh, uh, radio antenna connector. Uh, the reason is you actually still have you see, uh, power antenna wire in a Toyota connector, but this one, uh, I believe it's connected to pin number three, so you can see it here. You can see there is a pin here, but in the vehicle connector it's missing, so you won't get a uh, signal for power antenna. This is the reason why this blue wire is being connected like that to a Toto wiring harness and as you can see there is a small pin right there which uh, will provide the signal for power antenna. The set comes with GPS antenna and uh, Wi-Fi antenna. Right now we will connect uh, both of these and our wiring harness and uh, test how everything works. Our Wi-Fi antenna is has, has a blue connector so it will be connected right here and the similar situation with GPS it's purple right now we'll connect our wiring harness And this side will connect to Toyota connectors. As you can see, we won't be using this 28 pin connector for now. So you just connect two of these and uh, our radio antenna. And, of course, the actual antenna. Okay. We have 
have power. Let's check the radio. I'm gonna look for all available radio stations. Uh, let's see if we have GPS signal. So I have to go to settings. Uh, I believe it's device and uh, location status. And here you can see that we have GLONASS, reception and GPS. So on the right here it says we have uh, 7 GPS satellites and uh, 5 GLONASS. That's great, that's working. And right now I'll try uh, VLAN. So I'm gonna turn it on and I will also create a hotspot from my phone to be able to use the data from my phone. So I'm gonna go to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi connections. Um, I'm gonna create Wi-Fi hotspot and now we'll check if uh, I have my G8 thing yes it's right here yes we have connection so we can use internet here now uh, Let's check, let's check YouTube. And of course I'll be looking for my own channel, because everybody else does that. Here we are. Rough for oil change. Too many ads here. So yes, everything is working. And you see how responsive uh, the head unit is because it has a faster processor now. Okay, so the GPS antenna will go in this area. So guys, this is any airbag, so you have to avoid any interference with airbag. So the cable itself goes on the top of the airbag and have no interference, as I said. Now it's very easy access from this area. And later we will fix it in proper in the proper way. So basically this part is done. As for the Wi-Fi antenna, we'll probably hide it somewhere in this area here. Uh, right now we're going to install the microphone for the 8 auto head unit.
and this is where you will connect the microphone. Uh, we have tested the unit and uh, appears that we have another issue that we have to deal with. So the volume works fine from the unit, but it looks like we lost our steering wheel controls. So in order to fix it, we had to get this uh, steering wheel control interface. It's called ASWC1. It's universal fit. So it's supposed to auto detect uh, the vehicle and it auto detects the aftermarket radio. In order to get instructions for the Scion, you have to go to the to their website accessinterfaces.com and uh, over there you will be able to find vehicle feed guide where you can download instructions for uh, for our Scion. So it looks like this. So you have a bunch of information here. I'll briefly show you guys how it works. So we have our vehicle connector. It's gonna be this one. So initially it was connected to the Pioneer head unit. Now it's not being used because we're using a different harness. We have only two connectors right now. And this one is not used. Because of that, you'll have to follow these instructions and uh, connect a bunch of wires well the bunch by a bunch i mean i believe it's only like three three or four wires out of all these that we have to connect and uh, hopefully it will be able to detect our atoto system our access module also comes with 3.5 millimeter jack which in our case uh, we'll probably be able to use uh, because as you see our Atoto harness also comes with one all wires have been connected and right now we'll see our LED signals Okay, so we have a red LED light, which means that uh, the access module has uh, recognized the vehicle. We have seen a number of LED uh, lights flashing, and in the end, uh, after the sequence of lights, uh, we so solid red which means that uh, the module has detected the vehicle okay so our access module has recognized the vehicle but it we still don't have uh, steering wheel controls and uh, the reason for that is it did not recognize uh, the atoto head unit in order to fix this we'll have to choose a radio type manually as you can see in the manual we have a um, a bunch of different uh, radio types and uh, like I'll tell you right away because I already tried it uh, radio type number one Eclipse type one will actually work for a Toto but when you do your installation if uh, that option doesn't work for you I would go through the whole list until you find the one that works so uh, again uh, in the manual there are instructions how to change them but I, I will quickly show you how it's done so first of all we have to turn off the vehicle and then put the ignition into the on position. Now we have to wait for 3 seconds 
and then we will need to press the volume uh, down button press and hold it so now you will see a solid red LED on the access module and again I'm, I'm keep I'm still holding the minus button so once you see that now you can choose the uh, number of the radio type in our case it's number one so what you have to do you have to press the plus button once and when you press it you need to make sure that you'll see a, a red light uh, flashing on the module so I'm gonna press it right now okay so it means we just basically uh, pressed it once if you have to do it multiple times red let's say for Alpine you have to press it seven times and you have to see the light seven times so once you've done that you have to press minus again and then you will see uh, the solid red light again so I'm gonna press it right now press and hold it so now we see the solid red light it will disappear it means that right now our radio type has been uh, chosen so from here we have to go to SWC setup in our Etoto system and uh, as you can see here it tells us uh, to press and hold a uh, button on steering wheel to start learning matching so I'm gonna press I'll, I'll try to show you guys minus button and you can see that uh, our text has changed and now we can select one of the buttons uh, basically we can give this button the value that we would like it can be actually any value that you see here in this list so I'm gonna uh, it's gonna be a bit, a bit tricky I'm by myself right now so it's gonna be like this I actually have to use my elbow press minus and uh, here we will choose minus basically this assignment of the value is complete so now our minus volume button is gonna do what it has to do reduce the volume same thing with plus so I'm gonna pl press plus and you can see a similar text again so I'm gonna again use my elbow press plus volume uh, sorry volume up and choose the value to set up another button, uh, actually both of these, it's going to be slightly different because when I press them, you can see it kind of disappears. I'm not sure exactly why, but I found the way to uh, make it work. So I'll have to continuously press one of the buttons, and at the same time, I'll be I'll have to press uh, the value that I want to give it on the screen as well. So I'll try to show you guys how I have to set up camera like this. So right now I'm going to press the, this button multiple times on the steering wheel and the, on the screen. So you can see that our text is changing and at the same time I'll have to uh, press this button to give it a value, a value. So as you can see, now it has a value. Same with the other one. Okay, so we set up both of these buttons, so this one, this one and this one. So we have basically our four of our buttons now have value. As for the mode, I can't say that I have used it much before with the original head unit. And uh, what's cool, because right now I can actually choose any other value that I want. And uh, what I would like to assign uh, to it is uh, this one, pause, play, which actually I think is uh, really nice, at least for myself. So I'll have to use the same method, so I'm, I'll have to press it multiple times, at the same time uh, pressing the button on the screen, like that. Okay, there we go. So, all five buttons have been set up. Now I have to press save and exit. Now let's test 
our buttons. So volume down. There we go up. It works. Down. Now I'm gonna uh, play some music. So I'll go to Bluetooth music. And there you go. Volume down. Now I'm gonna change my tracks, my music, back and forth. One more time. Volume up, volume down. Okay, and uh, I'll try to pause it now. So I'll press the mode button. Music has stopped playing. I'll pr press it again. Yep, everything works now. Uh, I'm going to go over the wires again and show you guys how we did this connection. So we actually followed instructions, which I have downloaded, basically exactly as they suggest we should do it. So from our access uh, module we have one red wire going to uh, the Atoto slash Toyota harness, so it gets its uh, accessory signal from there. Then we have two more wires, so I'm sorry, three more wires, which are uh, this green and orange, the black, and the green and black. All of them go into um, to this connector. So they all have been connected here. This is how we did the connection using these uh, uh, couplers, uh, but again, you can do it any way you like. And uh, also, so our black wire that connects uh, to the gray also gets sent uh, to the ground. So, and the ground point, uh, I'll show you where it's located in this vehicle, is right here. You can see there is a bull there. This is where we connected the ground. So in this vehicle it was done this way. I know there is lots of wires, but as I have mentioned before, if you follow the instruction, the manual, you should be able to figure it out. I think it's pretty cool that you have this SWC, which is like steering wheel control setup. Again, because, well, you can actually assign uh, any of these options to any of your buttons so for example uh, if I want to uh, well my current uh, mode button is assigned to pause and play well I can assign any other value to it for example uh, I can choose this button to uh, answer the phone for example or I can uh, uh, choose a mute button so anything you like and I think that gives you a lot of flexibility so um, this setup was pretty challenging to be honest with you because we had to figure out a lot of things on our own but it's possible to do it and uh, this access uh, module definitely works so I, I really hope that uh, when you guys do this installation yourself all this information will be pretty helpful at this point we are almost done the unit is fully functional, uh, we even managed to retain steering wheels controls and uh, what I have to do now is basically arrange all the wiring, hide the wires, use zip ties, including this box, it's all gonna go behind the head unit in that area. Also I didn't mention it before but uh, the unit comes with two USB cables which uh, basically will go through that opening and uh, be hidden in the glove box uh, both of them 
get installed right here there is USB 1 and uh, USB 2 so that's pretty much it guys uh, thanks for watching we will be making more Cyan videos we actually plan to make a backup uh, camera video soon so stay tuned and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the video